We are the creators of data, devoted to our devices, and connected now more than ever. When we send our data to the cloud, who brings it there? Who keeps it safe? And who profits? Cyrus One has the answer. Some things bear repeating. In an environment like this where uh, people expect the Federal Reserve to raise rates twice this year, perhaps even more, you need to be very selective with your approach to high-yielding dividend stocks like the utilities or the real estate investment trusts, even though interest rates have been dropping like a stone of late. Remember, ultimately, higher rates make these bond market alternative plays less attractive. The REITs in particular have had a very rough time. Uh, but there's one kind of real estate investment trust that's actually been working, and that's the data center REITs. Makes sense. With the rise of cloud computing, there's tremendous demand for data storage. And the best data storage real estate is becoming a lot more lucrative. We've talked about this with Digital Realty. Tonight, i got a new one for you. Cyrus One, or Cone, C-O-N-E for you home gamers. Cyrus One is a high-growth REIT that specializes in owning data center properties, and the stock's been on fire lately. It's up 14% year-to-date. Plus, even up here, the stock still sports a 3.26% yield, which isn't bad. So can the data center theme keep propelling the stock higher? Let's take a closer look with Gary Wodizek. He is the president and CEO of Cyrus One. To learn more about the company and where it is headed, Mr. Wodizek, welcome to Mad Money. Uh, thanks, Jim. And you can call me Wojo. Wojo. All right, we'll do Wojo. Wojo, <laughs> there was a company uh, that got downgraded today called NVIDIA, and it's a favorite right. of a lot of our viewers. And one of the things that was in the downgrade to sell was they said they see the data center slowing. I read everything about your company. I don't think you would agree with that analysis, would you? No, I wouldn't. Uh, all we've seen is, uh, is continued buy signals. We've come across our biggest year ever since, uh, since we IPO'd. We were up 33% last year, and we expect more of the same uh, heading it to 17, and actually for the next several years, uh, frankly. And that's accelerated revenue growth from where you were because of great demand for data centers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you just look at all the big uh, cloud companies out there. They're big companies now, and they're growing at 50 60% growth rates, whether it's Amazon, Microsoft, Oracle, and we don't see that slowing down. And, you know, the runway for continued growth should continue for probably the next decade. And from the looks of things, many of your uh, locations are actually sold out, and you got to do more building in order to be able to meet the demand. Yeah, that's that's a great problem to have, right? We've been uh, we've been chasing our uh, customer demand for the last year and a half, and uh, you know, hopefully by the second half of this year, we're going to have a lot of uh, additional capacity online and continue to, to drive our growth into uh, into eighteen. I thought you had a great line in your conference call. That we were talking about. I want people to understand this. That why cloud companies don't necessarily want to build their own real estate and tell you to do it. Why is that? Um, well, we, we tell the, uh, our customers that they shouldn't be farmers, right? Um, everyone can basically plant you know, their own corn and tomatoes, and they could do a pretty good job on it. But we've all collectively decided to outsource to the farmers for, for that. We do the same thing with our customers. You know, we're, we're, we're selling to the largest companies in the world that are either creating new industries or disrupting existing ones. And, and they don't need to build and manage their own, you know, digital factories. You know, they did in the past when that product wasn't available. But now, you know, there's no re to, reason for them to do it. We could build it cheaper and faster at the same quality. And so we expect over time all of those companies will outsource all of their data centers to a company like us. And one of the things I thought that was very interesting was that you've got a, it seems like a hammerlock on the healthcare vertical. Talk about a group that does, shouldn't be in there uh, building data centers. How did you get that uh, particular tie-in? Well, you know, it's it, over time, you just kind of continue to prosecute your strategy against customers, convincing them to outsource. Our focus on healthcare is basically driven by the fact that about 15% of all the data that's going to get created over the next five years is going to be in the healthcare space. So we wanted to target that vertical so we'd have a, a product that's going to enable us to continue to grow alongside, you know, the growth in data for, for healthcare. And is that healthcare records or could it one day be genomics? It, it's both. It's it's all the genome. We were with a customer today. The reason I was in New York is meeting with customers today on the acquisition that we just closed uh, earlier this month um, and talking to a company that is doing really specialized genomic research, actually, uh, you know, molecular, uh, you know, synthesis sure. uh, work, uh, which requires a high uh, compute uh, aspect to it. And their business is booming. And we expect there's going to be lots of additional companies like that, whether it's healthcare records, genomic sequencing, or, or just helping drug companies get drugs to, uh, to market faster. 
All right, one last question. It, I noticed that you have a lot of land, uh, 39 acres in northern Virginia, and that that's good land because they've got the cheapest power, and that matters at data centers, doesn't it? We, yeah, uh, power is uh, is really uh, really cheap in Virginia, but actually in the deal that we just closed in North Carolina, that's actually the cheapest, one of the cheapest rates in the country at four cents, and that's really wow. attractive to, to customers. So, you know, in a big tech megawatt deployment, that's about $4 million a year in savings uh, for them. Well, I got to tell you, you got a great growth story, you got a great yield, and I love the fact you gave great, you bumped at 11 percent, and you've got a fantastic long-term trajectory for that yield. Yeah, uh, uh, Wojo, <laughs> Gary <laughs> Wodizic, president and CEO of Cyrus One. A great story. Thank you so much for coming on Mad Money, sir. Great. Thanks a lot, Jim. Thanks All for right. having me. Mad Money's Take back care. after the break. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.